Hello students, I am Renu Matthew from IICMR MCA department. In today's lecture, we will study what are variables in research. As we all know, a variable is a measurable characteristic that varies. It may change from group to group, person to person or within one person over time. And experimental variables are any property of person or thing that varies and is not fixed. That is, factors affecting the result of the study. In scientific research, scientists and researchers utilize a variety of methods and variables when conducting their experiments. In simple terms, a variable represents a measurable attribute that changes or varies across the experiment, whether comparing results between multiple groups, multiple people, or when using a single person in an experiment conducted over time. What an experimenter does is he changes or varies one factor and observes or measures what happens as a result of manipulation. In all, there are six variable types. Independent variables, dependent variables, intervening variables, moderator variables, control variables and extraneous variables. First, let's see what are independent variables. An independent variable is a variable that affects the dependent variable. It is a factor that is varied or manipulated in a research study. It is the assumed cause of a problem. For example, let us say height depends upon age and gender. Here, age and gender are the independent variables. Let's have one more example. If a scientist conducts an experiment to test the theory that a vitamin could extend a person's life expectancy, then the dependent variable here will be the lifespan and the independent variable will be the amount of vitamin that is given to the subject within the experiment. The dependent variable is the factor that is measured or observed, the change that is brought about or is affected by the change in the independent variable. It is the assumed effect of another variable in the study. The dependent variable is the variable a researcher is interested in in his study. This is the fact manipulated by the researcher and it produces one or more results known as dependent variables. Example, if we say height depends upon age and gender, then here height is the dependent variable and age and gender are the independent variables. Let us also consider the same example we discussed before. An experiment to test the theory that a vitamin could extend a person's life expectancy. Then the dependent variable or the variable being affected by the independent variable is the lifespan. Thus from our understanding of independent variables and dependent variables, we can say that independent variables influences dependent variables or dependent variables is influenced by independent variable. Now let's see what are intervening variables. Intervening variables refer to abstract processes that are not directly observable but that can link the independent variables and dependent variables. In many types of behavioral research, the relationship between independent and dependent variables is not simple one of stimulus to response. Certain variables that cannot be controlled or measured directly may have an important effect on the outcome. These modifying variables intervene between the cause and the effect. An intervening variable is something that impacts the relationship between an independent and a dependent variable. Usually, the intervening variables is caused by the independent variable and is itself a cause of the dependent variable. For example, there is an absurd positive correlation between the level of education and level of income such that people with higher levels of education tend to earn higher levels of income. This observable trend, however, is not directly causal in nature. Occupation serves as the intervening variable between the two since educational level, which is the independent variable, influences what kind of occupation one will have, the dependent variable, and therefore how much money one will earn. In other words, 
more schooling tends to mean a higher status job which in turn tends to bring a higher income thinking casually the intervening variable follows the independent variable but precedes the dependent variable from a research standpoint it clarifies the nature of the relationship between the independent and dependent variables moderating variables a moderating variable also called a moderator variable changes the strength or direction of an effect between the independent and independent variables by modifying the effect of the intervening variables moderator variables are measured and taken into consideration in research studies moderating variables can be qualitative non numerical values like race social economic class or gender or it can be quantitative numerical values like weight reward level or age extraneous variables extraneous variables are those uncontrolled variables that is variables not manipulated by the experimenter that may have a significant influence on the results of a study many research conclusions are questionable because of the influence of these extraneous variables there are four types of extraneous variables first being situational variables these are aspects of the environment that might affect the participants behavior like noise temperature lighting conditions etc situational variables should be controlled so they are the same for all participants the second type participant or person variable this refers to the ways in which each participant varies from the other and how this could affect the results example mood intelligence anxiety concentration etc for example if a participant who has performed a memory test was tired or had poor eyesight it would affect the performance and the results of the experiment thus the experiment design chosen can have an effect on participant variables the third type is experimenter or investigator effects the experimenter unconsciously conveys to participants how they should behave during the research that is called experimenter bias the researcher might do this by giving unintentional clues to the participants about what the experiment is about and how they expect them to behave this affects the participants behavior the experimenter is totally unaware of the influence which he or she is an exerting and the cues may be very subtle but they may have an influence nevertheless also the personal attributes of the researcher like age gender accent behavior manner can affect the behavior of the participants demand characteristics demand characteristics are all the clues in an experiment which convey to the participant the purpose of the research participants will be affected by the surroundings the researcher's characteristics the researcher's behavior for example non verbal communication and their interpretation of what is going on in the situation experimenters should attempt to minimize these factors by keeping the environment as natural as possible carefully following standardized procedures finally perhaps different experimenters should be used to see if they obtain similar results suppose we want to measure the effect of alcohol on driving ability we should have to try to ensure that extraneous variables did not affect the results these variables could include familiarity with the car as some people may drive better because they have driven this make of car before familiarity with the test 
as some people may do better than others because they know what to expect on the test. Used to drinking, as the effects of alcohol on some people may be less than others because they are used to drinking. Full stomach, the effect of alcohol on some subjects may be less than others because they have just had a big meal. If these extraneous variables are not controlled, they may become confounding variables because they could go on to affect the results of the experiment. Now let's see what are confounding variables. A confounding variable is an extra variable that you did not account for in your study. They can ruin an experiment and give you useless results. They can suggest there is a correlation when in fact there isn't. They can even introduce bias. That is why it's important to know what one is and how to avoid getting them into your experiment in the first place. In an experiment, the independent variable typically has an effect on your dependent variable. For example, let's suppose you are researching whether lack of exercise lead to weight gain. Here, lack of exercise is your independent variable and weight gain is your dependent variable. As confounding variables are any other variable that also has an effect on your dependent variable, in the study, the confounding variable would be age, gender, and how much people eat. They are like extra independent variables that are having a hidden effect on your dependent variables. Confounding variables can cause two major problems. It can increase variance and it can introduce bias in study. Let's say you test 200 volunteers out of which 100 are men and 100 women. You find that lack of exercise leads to weight gain. One problem with this experiment is that it lacks any control variables. Control variable is an experimental element which is constant and unchanged throughout the course of investigation. Control variables could strongly influence experimental results. For example, the use of placebos or random assignments to groups. So you really can't say for sure whether lack of exercise leads to weight gain. One confounding variable is how people eat. It is also possible that men eat more than women. This could also make gender a confounding variable. Nothing was mentioned about starting weight, occupation or age. A poor study design like this could lead to bias in research study. For example, if all the women in the study were middle aged and all the men were age 16, age would have a direct effect on weight gain. Thus makes age a confounding variable. So make sure that you identify all the possible confounding variables in your study. Make a list of everything you can think of one by one. Consider whether those listed items might influence the outcome of your study. Usually someone might have done a similar study before you. So check the academic databases for ideas about what to include on your list. Once you have figured out the variables, use sam random sampling technique to reduce bias and introduce control variables to control confounding variables. Thus, today we discuss the types of variables in research studies. Thank you.